Hello, it's Jeff at Battlefish again, and I'm here with another schooling redfish video in the St. John's River. That's what it is. That's what it is, is my comment, because this was the first sighting in this area. And I'm never sure it's redfish, you know, it could be a big school of mullet or whatever, but uh, I'm often surprised as I was here. Bunch of so I want you to watch this whole video till the end and tell me how many redfish I caught. If you do, and you show up at the Salt Strong meeting at Mavi's on Beach Boulevard, on June 27th at 6.30 and tell me how many fish I caught this day, uh, Monday, June 17th. I will give you a battlefish hat. To the first six people that come up to me and tell me how many redfish I caught. Uh, that's a wrist brace on my left hand. I, I fell cutting the lawn and uh, tripped over some debris and uh, fell on my wrist and I think I broke it. I'm doctors treating it. We're not sure yet, but uh, we'll see. So I'm making it a little more difficult to land these fish with my left hand. Both Sonia and I are entered in the CCA tournament that ends uh, Labor Day weekend, and uh, you can only enter one species per day. So, um, but I take a picture of each of them um, and then release them. You'll note uh, many of these fish have multiple spots on them. That was kind of odd. Um, I thought um, of the fish I caught. So where am I finding these? So I took a flyer this day, uh, Monday the 17th, because of the wind. Um, I basically, to fish the river, I have three choices, Goodby's Creek, Mandarin, or Trout Creek. I decided to go to Trout Creek, and the reason I did that is because I noted on Saturday when we were at Goodby's, uh, the water was very salty. We haven't had any rain, um, and there was quite a bit of salt debris on my boat when I got back that I had to wash off, which I have never seen before in the years I've been fishing the St. John's River. So I figured, well, uh, it's gonna be salty pretty far south. So I went to Trout Creek and uh, started fishing uh, around there and then headed a little bit north of the Shands uh, Bridge. This is going to be one of the longest videos ever posted because it's the most fish I've, I've caught in St. John's River. Uh, and all these fish I caught were within a, about a, oh, less than a two hour window, probably an hour and a half window uh, between about 10.30 and noon. A couple things to learn when chasing these schooling redfish. Uh, you have to have several rods prepared number one. Number two, bait does not matter. Uh, they'll eat anything if you throw it in, in, in a school like that, so the bait doesn't matter. However, I did discover durability is a big deal. Um, the crazy croaker, uh, very durable, multiple fish, no problem. Lip hooks, a uh, couple of in-the-cheek hooks, um, but uh, pr pretty durable and uh, good hookups. The paddle tails and the uh, bass assassin with the weighted hook uh, was a problem because it ripped out. You'd have to re, re uh, bait it, and rebaiting takes time, and you don't have time. Uh, these fish are moving very quickly. Uh, you've got to get them in the boat, get them off, and get after another uh, school. So. Uh, durability of a bait is, is, is very important. I don't use treble hooks. They're too hard to get out. 
Uh, I don't, not, I've gotten away from treble hooks completely except for kingfish. Uh, so uh, treble hooks is not an answer either. Oh. Not sure what happened here, but I believe another hell, fish cut me off. Uh, redfish have pretty sharp gill plates, and these fish are going in all directions. And I think what probably happened is a fish caught the line because there was a hard jerk before the line broke. So I've had a few questions about the live scope. Uh, first of all, the graph is a 9.3 SV UHD 2, which is the higher definition one, uh, 9 inch. And the live scope is the LVS 34, which is the, uh, the best one you can get currently. I believe they're coming out with another one. Uh, it's about $1,800 for just that. Uh, there's a black box involved besides the graph uh, and then the transducer. The water is very clear because we haven't had any rain. Uh, I call it bourbon clear water. And you're looking at uh, the bottom there. You can see the bottom there. It's pro probably, well, you can see the bottom in about two, three feet of water. Um, but I'm guessing I'm about uh, two feet of water right now. So I want you to watch this whole video till the end and tell me how many redfish I caught. If you do, and you show up at the Salt Strong meeting at Mavi's on Beach Boulevard on June 27th at 6.30, and tell me how many fish I caught this day, uh, Monday, June 17th, I will give you a battlefish hat. To the first six people that come up to me and tell me how many redfish I caught. So I switched rods because uh, that one broke off the crazy croaker so I'm using a weighted uh, hook and a uh, gambler paddle tail similar to the bass assassin. Um, uh, chicken on a chain color with a chartreuse tail. I caught two 24 inch redfish, those were the smallest ones, and then I, I kept this one. Um, I caught one that was 27 and a half inches, um, which went back, obviously. I switched rods again and I'm using a Tsunami Pro Mullet. Um, you can get those at uh, Reseller's Reef along with a lot of the other fishing gear as well that I'm using. Um, but the Pro Mullet's a great, very durable bait, good for tarpon and uh, redfish. Okay, three different baits. Redfish don't care. Crazy croaker. This is the Pro Mullet and a paddle tail. Oh man, this is big. If you have not by now subscribed to my channel, I don't know what you're waiting for. There's over 230 videos I think I'm up to now, uh, fishing mostly the St. Johns River. Um, which is right in my backyard. 
redfish, tarpon, largemouth bass, channel catfish, or whatever else. Yeah, and if you watch my videos, you'll notice that I rarely, if ever, of the hundreds of redfish I've caught, I can only remember three that I caught near a dock. And if you watch these schooling redfish videos, there is nothing around me. There's no structure, nothing, no docks, especially in this one, there's no docks anywhere near me. Um, so, you know, you, you got to get away from the docks. Um, there might be some resident fish there. Which I don't believe in resident yeah, fish, by the way. Four, um, they're constantly moving, and the live scope has definitely, definitely proved that these fish are constantly moving. They are not resident in one place. I think 31 was the biggest of that day. The next day, Sonia and I went out and we got a 33. Making up for all the days I've been out here not catching anything. Oh man. Yeah, I've had several days out here uh, on the St. John's where we, we caught small flounder, small redfish, but nothing that was video worthy. And uh, so it's been uh, kind of a slog this winter, and especially early spring, but um, you know, this day really kind of made up for some of that. So I have my uh, live scope set up at 120 foot range and um, I found that to be ideal for me anyway, especially in the windy conditions. I can cast with the wind about 100 to 120 feet if I get it up in the air. Um, and I get a lar very large area. So 120 foot range means I'm looking at 120 feet to the left, 120 feet to the right, and 120 feet out in front. So uh, it's quite a large area I'm covering and I can see fish as they come into the area and position the boat so I can get a good cast, especially if I have a second person in the boat. I want to get the boat kind of 90 degrees or to the fish so they can get a shot at it as well. I'm using the mount that came with the Garmin uh, live scope. It's an eight degree mount uh, and I'm using uh, perspective mode. I find perspective mode works great 12 to 10 feet or less of water uh, versus the forward uh, position. I mounted my uh, live scope on a separate pole that I made with one inch PVC and one and a quarter inch PVC and uh, it works great. Um, I did not go with a uh, trolling motor mount uh, because I want to be able to circle it around the boat and see pretty quickly where the fish are and you do have to see pretty quickly. These fish appear behind you, they appear in front of you, they appear to the side of you and you're, I'm constantly turning my handle around at 360 degrees to see where the fish are and then positioning the trolling motor uh, to get around so I can get to the fish and cast it. Ah, damn, 
It's like Louisiana. Hey! I'm retired, so I watch a lot of YouTube videos, a lot of fishing videos, and uh, I'm very jealous of the Louisiana people who go in and slay a bunch of redfish in one day. Big redfish, too. So uh, this was my Louisiana day in the St. John's River. And speaking of trolling motor, I, there is just no way you could chase these fish without a, a trolling motor, uh, especially an iPilot like I've you know, got. Um, I'm seriously thinking of upgrading to a different trolling motor brushless. I'm still looking at Minn Kota or Garmin Kraken. I uh, haven't decided yet, but we'll be hopefully seeing that in the near future. But uh, right now, I, you, there's no way you could chase these fish without a trolling motor. Um, Pretty powerful trolling motor to get in position. This might be the biggest of the day. I don't know. Or I'm getting tired one or the other. Uh, besides the trolling motor, the power pole helps a lot too uh, to be able to stop the boat where you want to. I have a single power pole, which I like by the way, um, because I can pivot on that single power pole with the trolling motor I can kind of turn the boat around um, and still be anchored. Well, there you can see this Tsunami Pro Mullet Paddle Tail. Uh, they come in uh, silver and uh, kind of a greenish color. Again, I don't think it really matters. The big thing is durability of a bait so it lasts and the cost. So, you know, the advantage of the Crazy Croaker is uh, regular price is $5.99 for two of them. They've had them on sale for $3.99 for two of them. Um, and the Pro Mullet, I think, is $5.99 for two of them as well. They're coming in a two-pack. So uh, the cost is small. And they hold up really well. There it is. There you have it, there's a school right in front of me. If I had another partner fishing, they'd just throw into that school and we'd double up. So I believe in uh, heavyweight rods, reels, and line. Uh, I don't understand why people use 10 pound test line. Um, they think they can cast further. I, I'll outcast you any day of the week with 50 pound test. I use uh, Power Pro Slick uh, or Spider Wire, and um, I have no problem casting 80, 90, 100 feet any day, in the wind, even into the wind. So uh, I don't understand the lightweight line thing, uh, number one. Number two, uh, in the St. John's River, you could catch redfish like I'm catching here uh, all the way to 42 45 inches um, and you can hook into 150 pound tarpon so if you're using a 2500 reel or even a 3000 reel uh, with 10 pound test you're just gonna get spooled um, heck you can get spooled on a garfish 
mm. in the St. Johns River. So I think it's just silly to use lightweight gear uh, in the St. Johns River. Uh, the reels I'm using are the Saltus, the Daiwa Saltus uh, 5000s and uh, 6000 and a uh, one of the reels is a Certate, Daiwa Certate 5000. Um, I get about 250 to 300 yards of Power Pro on those reels, uh, which gives me plenty to play with. Um, and, uh, you know, they work great. Here you can see me adjusting the uh, live scope, pointing it uh, around the boat, kind of scanning, looking for the school. Yeah, another reason you want a stiffer rod, uh, medium heavy fast or heavy fast uh, that I use is to be able to set the hook, especially in tarpon's uh, mouth. Uh, if you're using a lightweight gear, you just it's very difficult to set a artificial or any hook for that matter in a tarpon's mouth. Uh, you've got to have a pretty stout rod. So I want you to watch this whole video till the end and tell me how many redfish I caught. If you do, and you show up at the Salt Strong meeting at Mavi's on Beach Boulevard on June 27th at 6.30 and tell me how many fish I caught this day, uh, Monday, June 17th, I will give you a battlefish hat to the first six people that come up to me and tell me how many redfish I caught. Sorry for the wind noise, but uh, it was uh, blowing between 16 and 20 miles an hour. I actually have a an anemometer on my boat. I use a little handheld one, and I was gusting to over 25 at times uh, by the end of the, the day, at the end of my day anyway. I, I quit about 1.30 uh, and headed back uh, to Trout Creek Ramp. Yeah, the one good thing about uh, the wind was it uh, was not overly hot, so uh, we kept pretty comfortable all day. 
Yeah, it's kind of hard to see, but I've got the uh, live scope uh, pole mounted to my polling platform. I have quite a large polling platform that came with the boat and I was able to bolt it to the legs of the casting platform and um, I have it on a pivot with a locking pin so I can pivot it up for travel. I can pull it up straight up and pin it as well uh, for travel short distances but when I go long distances I uh, pivot and lay it down uh, and then velcro it to my uh, push pole. So this uh, section of video is a great demonstration of using the trolling motor to position the boat uh, when you're fighting a fish. So what number are we up to now? Don't forget, tell me how many fish I caught at the Saltstrong meeting June 27, 6.30 at Mavi's on Beach Boulevard in the Intercoastal Waterway. And I will, the first six people who tell me how many fish I caught, I will give you a battlefish hat. Same. 30 inches. They're all the same. Yeah. Okay, it's uh, about 30 mile an hour winds. I had the best day ever on the St. John's River. I don't even know how many redfish I caught. And there were two 24 inchers. I kept one. Several 30, 29, 30, and 31 inchers. All chasing them on the live scope. Big schools. Probably 50 to 100 fish in the school. Um, they hung around today for some reason. I don't know why, but they hung around in one particular area and. Uh, I was able to hook up. I lost two or three. One broke off, I don't know how. Uh, we'll see that. So, uh, great uh, day. I'm gonna head back, I think, if I can make it back in this wind. Thanks for watching.